Solving General Chemistry Problems Electrochemistry We have seen how by changing the concentration of participants in a reaction, we can alter the potential of the cell. One interesting application involves constructing a cell from two half cells of the identical materials. Instead of the Danielle cell, imagine replacing the zinc electrode with another copper electrode and the zinc sulfate solution with another copper sulfate solution. What would be happening in this cell? With both half cells under standard conditions, their standard reduction potentials are identical. Which one is the cathode and which is the anode? Neither? Both? The cell potential would be 0.34 minus 0.34, 0. The cell would, obviously, be at equilibrium. There is no net chemical force driving the reaction in either direction. But what would happen if the concentration of the uh, copper 2 plus ion in the left hand cell were lowered to 0.1 molar? The system is no longer in equilibrium. Think of what Le Chatelier would say about this. The system will try to return to equilibrium and it can do that by lowering the concentration of copper 2 plus in the higher concentration, the right hand cell, and raising the concentration in the lower concentration, the left hand cell. How can it do that? Well, the left hand cell could undergo oxidation so that the copper metal loses a couple of electrons and the co resulting copper ion diffuses into the solution. At the same time, those two electrons could migrate over to the right hand cell and combine on the surface of the copper electrode with a copper 2 plus ion, resulting in a metal copper ion depositing on the electrode and which would remove a copper ion from the solution. How can we use the Nernst equation in this case? This is the only hard part of this kind of question. We have to put some additional labels to keep track of everything because it's all just copper. I put a subscript O on the species involved in the oxidation reaction in the anode and an R on those involved in the reduction process. The overall chemical reaction is just this. Now the solid electrodes of course do not enter into the calculation in, uh, because their activity is just one. We just have to get the right solvated species into the numerator. The Nernst equation takes on this form. The copper 2 plus in the oxidation half cell is in the numerator. Substitute in the numbers to find that the cell potential is about 30 millivolts. You could probably guess by now that if the ratio of concentrations were 100 instead of 10, the cell potential would be 60 millivolts. A potential difference of about 300 millivolts is still quite a small voltage, but it would arise when there was a concentration ratio of 10 to the 10, or if one half cell had a concentration of 1 molar and the other had a concentration of 100 picomolar. This is very, very small. This points out that there is another important application for electrochemical cells. We have been thinking about them so far in terms of the voltage and power they can produce, the conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy. However, an equally important application is their role as chemical sensors. Rather than using chemistry to produce electricity, they can be used to measure electricity to determine chemical concentration. For instance, if you or someone you know struggles with diabetes, the device they use to test the glucose level in their blood is an electrochemical cell. Many inorganic salts are only slightly soluble in water. They dissolve a little bit and then the solution is saturated and it precipitates back out as quickly as it dissolves. The solid is in equilibrium with the saturated solution. The equilibrium constant for such a reaction is called the solubility product, or KSP. An electrochemical measurement to determine the concentration of ions in the saturated solution is both sensitive and accurate. Here is an example to determine the solubility product for the iodide salt of silver. Set up an electrochemical cell using silver ions. In one compartment, add sufficient silver nitrate, it's a completely, completely soluble silver salt, to make it 0.2 molar in silver ions. In the other compartment, add several grams of silver iodide. Most of it will not dissolve, but a very small amount will have dissolved and soon the solution will be in equilibrium with the solid. The equilibrium concentration is so small that you will not be able to perceive a difference with your eyes alone. Determining the concentration of silver in the compartment with silver iodide is the task at hand. The cell with the silver iodide will have the smallest concentration of silver ion, and so the silver electrode will be oxidized to try to produce more silver ions. We connect it to the negative terminal of a voltmeter. The other half cell will be the cathode. Here is the Nernst equation.
Note that in this reaction, n is equal to 1, as the silver ion has a valence of plus 1. We now need to solve this equation for x, the unknown silver ion concentration. Take that expression, divide through by minus 0 0.02569 to give minus 16.89, Exponentiate both sides to get rid of the logarithm term. e to the uh, minus 16.89 is 4.62 times 10 to the minus 8. Solving for x gives us 9.24 times 10 to the minus 9 molar as the concentration for the silver ion. When we added the solid silver iodide to the pure water and one silver ion dissolved, one iodide ion must have also dissolved. Therefore, the iodide concentration must equal the silver concentration. The reaction that represents this solvation process takes the solid silver iodide and produces the aqueous ions of silver and iodide. The equilibrium constant for this reaction is, as always, products over reactants. For this special case of this type of reaction, the equilibrium constant is also called the solubility product and is often given the symbol KSP. The reactant, however, is just the solid silver iodide, whose activity is always taken to be just one. Therefore, it does not appear explicitly in the expression. What remains is just the product of the two ions. Its value, then, is the square of 9.24 times 10 to the minus 9, where there's no units there, all canceled against the reference state of one molar, to give Ksp equals 8.54 times 10 to the minus 17. By this process, using this concentration cell, the measurement of a voltage of 0.434 volts allows us to have measured extremely small concentrations that might not be detected by other chemical methods. Electrochemistry provides very useful measurement sensors. Perhaps the most common sensor is for the measurement of the hydronium ion concentration in a solution. It is usually reported as the pH of the solution. The traditional, but rather impractical, hydrogen ion sensor is the standard hydrogen electrode called SHE. With carefully prepared platinum electrodes and the controlled presence of hydrogen gas, a sensor sensitive to H plus concentration can be operated. We'll look at the SHE setup as a concentration, concentration cell and see how it measures H plus concentration. Given this cell, we set up the Nernst equation as before. The unknown H plus concentration is in the numerator. We include the standard H plus concentration and the partial pressure of both gases. However, the standard H plus is one molar and the gases are both one bar. They all appear just as one in the Nernst equation's reaction quotient. As well, we find it convenient in this case to convert the natural logarithm to the base 10 log. We multiply by the natural log of 10, which is 2.302585. We multiply the constants over with the measured cell potential, E. Take the exponent on the H plus concentration out of the logarithm. The rule, as you remember, is that the exponent is just multiplied out front. The twos on each side cancel. The definition of pH is the negative base 10 log of the concentration of hydronium ion concentration, and that's exactly what we have on the right-hand side. For an example, consider this cell to have a measured potential difference of 0 0.250 volts. What is the solution pH? Well, this is easily calculated. The pH of the unknown solution must be 4.23. This is a somewhat acidic solution. Lemon juice is more acidic, usually between pH of 2 or 3. Neutral pH is 7. Alkaline pH solutions are still higher. A measured potential of 0.5 volts would be correspond to a pH of 8.45. Now here is another concentration cell that might surprise you. This is an image of a mammalian neuron cell, the basis of your nerve transmission and brain structure. Cells communicate by passing electrical impulses, sudden changes in electric potential difference between each other. These electrical impulses are established by sudden changes in concentration of various ions inside the cell compared to outside the cell in the extracellular environment. Four of the most important ions that establish these potentials are given here, along with typical concentrations both inside and outside the cell. A combination of diffusion through ion channels and ion pumps or ion transporters, or, which are transmembrane proteins, help to maintain a difference in concentration, a concentration gradient, between the inside and the outside of a cell. This difference in concentration establishes a potential difference across the cell wall, just as if they were part of a concentration cell. 
As you can appreciate, this is by no means a thorough presentation of the many details of these important ion pumps and channels and how they operate. I leave that to any physiology classes you may yet take. What I would like to emphasize is to see how straightforward electrochemistry is being controlled by these complex enzymes. You can use the Nernst equation to calculate the potential difference to be measured across the cell membrane because of these concentration differentials the cell maintains. First of all, it is worth mentioning the obvious. This is not quite the same as the concentration cells we looked at earlier. For instance, there's no solid potassium electrodes, for instance, at which oxidation or reduction can occur. Counter ions that are not mentioned specifically do play an important role too. Nevertheless, there is a difference in concentration of ions separated by a membrane and embedded in that membrane are proteins that can change the concentration gradient and do so very quickly. When your muscles move, when you sense the texture of a surface with your hand, when your heart beats, when you perceive anything around you, when you think, all of these activities are mediated by these ion pumps opening and closing channels to the inflow and outflow of ions, which changes the potential difference across the cell membrane. Here is a very rough idea of the region around a cell membrane with an ion channel protein embedded in the membrane. The definition used in physiology is to define the outside of the cell as being at zero volts so that the potential across the membrane is defined as the potential inside the cell. A given ion with a greater concentration inside than outside the cell will produce a potential of the opposite sign if its concentration were greater outside than inside. Also, if the ion being considered is of the opposite charge, then the potential it would produce is of opposite polarity or sign. The Nernst equation is the starting point for understanding electrical properties of cells. While it is a considerably more complex environment, it is still useful to complete this table to see how each ion contributes to the transmembrane potential. First of all, we have to recalculate the term RT over F because the temperature is now 37 degrees Celsius, which is body temperature, rather than room temperature. 37 Celsius is 310 Kelvin. RT over F then is equal to 0 0.02673 volts at this temperature. Because we are calculating the potential relative to the outside of the cell, we write the following for the Nernst equation. Now calculate the potential generated by each ion. In the case of sodium, we have 0 0.02673 times the ln of 150 over 18, or 0 0.057, or plus 57 millivolts. For K, potassium, we have minus 102 millivolts. For chloride, we note that we now have a negative ion, so we must include a negative sign, and it is minus 76 millivolts. Finally, for calcium, we note that it has a valence of 2. We obtain uh, plus 126 millivolts. Electrochemistry is everywhere. Whether it be the result of the reduction and oxidation of atomic or molecular species, or the transport of ions by diffusion, or by active transport through ion pumps, electrochemistry makes life possible and is critical to so much of our modern technology.